Hey everyone, this is Ascension Empress with your new moon in the houses reading. So I will be going over how this new moon in Aries that we experienced yesterday will be affecting you personally. So if you're aware of your rising slash ascendant sign, which is your first house, you can watch this reading. I will be doing each sign, so I'll be time stamping it as well. And even though we had the new moon in Aries, this energy is still very potent. And we're about to enter, um, the moon is about to enter Taurus. And we're about to really have a great opportunity. There's an opportunity period from this evening. Today is Thursday the 26th until Saturday evening. So it's very beautiful because if you think about it, Jupiter is the planet that rules Thursday. So there's a lot of learning, there's knowledge, there's revelation that many people are receiving at this time. And then we end it on Saturday right before Sunday. So I'm getting there's a lot of structuring, there's a lot of discipline, there's a lot of organizing. Um, again, that final release of that Virgo full moon energy as we enter this full moon in Libra as well. So y'all, this is very exciting. Um, a lot of Taurus energy, Jim and I, y'all, we gonna get into it. We are gonna talk about it. Um, peace and blessings. Thank you so much. I pray everyone is doing well. And this is, you know, just a general. We will have a, you know, you y'all just give me y'all feedback and let me know what you think, and then we'll go from there. Because I ain't gonna push it. I ain't gonna push it. Um, but yeah, I will be using the Talima. I may clarify with the right away. I have been very, very drawn towards the Talima lately. And if you are new, welcome. Thank you so much for viewing. Don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for all your love and your support to those who've been here, um, who just subscribed, everything, everything. So let's see. So I'm just going to get an overall energy before we start with the signs of what we are being called because there is a huge calling at this time. Judgment energy has been very strong, and yeah, Saturn has finally, well not finally, but it's finally entering its transit with um, Aquarius. So it's not leaving, it. Cap it's left Capricorn, but it's going to go back retrograde, and then, so we still have this energy of completion, we still, have, especially with the 12th house Pisces energy that's been going on, um, and we still have structuring what is it that you're working hard for? What is it that you are earning? A lot of huge energy around value as well. But everything that's going on right now, especially with the economy, we have all this Taurus energy. Venus conjunct Uranus and Taurus. And it's going to be interesting because right before this opportunity period that we have tonight is this moon conjunct. Taurus in Uranus or the moon conjunct Uranus so it's just gonna be you know some people especially fixed signs my Leo Scorpio Aries and Taurus and may look say it may be a lot so let's see what messages do you have Ooh. The moon and it's crazy because this is technically like a moon reading so <laughs> Check out the Aries new moon reading that I did um, if you feel drawn to. This moon card, a lot of you are very intuitive at this time. Um, really tapped into that Pisces energy. I'm getting my Pisces as well. Like I said, some of you may have talked to a Pisces. Maybe, you know, it's just we had this full moon in Virgo. And a lot of people got washed up. They got... It's crazy. I don't want to say washed up, but thank you. A lot of people got washed out, okay? We had that huge tower energy. The tower energy was bound to happen with the all this Capricorn energy we've had with Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and then we had the sun back in January. So now, it, here we go. We're rebuilding. We're restructuring. And we can't do that until the tower happens. We can't do that until stuff filters out. And the moon is here to remind us that everything ain't permanent. You know, there's cycles. And to also remember, remember the lessons of the past is what I'm getting, especially when it comes to history. So if you need to study past economic history, do so, please. So let's see. 
Mm, the will again because history repeats itself and this is a time for us to be more innovative because yes history repeats itself but you know you it's Aquarius is calling for originality it's calling for authenticity it's calling for integrativeness like y'all have to be independent so this Aries energy is here to say okay Get your independence together. Get your passions together. Your beliefs, your visions with this Pisces energy as well. And then we're going to move forward with this Aquarius, Saturn and Aquarius energy. Because there can't be a restructuring without humanity and the masses in mind. And it's funny, you know, to say in mind, but that's that sword's energy. That's that air Aquarius energy, much like Libra and Gemini, who are experienced a lot of this as well. Like, you know, Gemini got the Saturn Aquarius in their ninth house and Libra. Whew. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see. Libra is ready to express themselves. What is the overall message for... This new moon's opportunity period that we have these next 48 hours. Wow. Move forward. Take action. The time is now. I, ooh, this is for whoever. I'm so glad I prayed before this, y'all. So glad because I had... I did a reading before the new moon reading that I just did. I realized that I hadn't prayed the first time. And so I just, I wasn't going to upload it. So I had to redo it. And that's what y'all got, that new moon reading. <laughs> but here you are, moving forward. Um, The lesson is, it, look, okay, if you're not, if you're stagnant, if you're still in this hangman energy, like, woe is me. Mercury's still retrograde because we're on a quarantine. No, this is the time for you to put together what you need. Because Taurus is that building. It's the start. Aries is the first sign. Taurus is the second of values, earned income, your possessions. Like, come on. Come on, y'all. It's time to move forward. And Cancer North Node is reminding you with this chariot card. So I am going to go ahead and get into it before I get on the rant with the signs and the houses. So this is mainly for my Senate and Risings. And moon as well. So whatever resonates with you, if you don't know your birth sign, but you know your moon sign, which you should, as long as you know your birthday, then we will go ahead and see. So this is for my Aries, sun, moon, and rising, whatever resonates with you. And I love how we start off with Aries and the car want to jump out because this is the energy. This is the energy. So... Wow. <laughs> the message here, first off, is don't get stuck in your head. Don't get washed up in that Virgo energy because that's what that's what it was there for. The behind the the lower vibrational of this Virgo full moon that happened was the devil, okay? It was definitely the devil. He hasn't been popping up as much in the readings, you know why? Because he's been showing up in different ways. You know, he's the people are harboring spirits and the, it ain't the time because Aries is you may be moving forward at this time to like okay let me help people get up out of their head and cut these self-sabotaging thoughts these self-sabotaging behaviors I don't know what's going on out there and with my Aries, this is happening in your second house. This moon, this new moon is happening in your first, but this opportunity period, yep. This opportunity period is bringing light to your second house of Taurus, of your earned income, your values, your possessions. So we have Venus already conjunct Uranus, and then we have Venus about to trine Jupiter as well. So that will be happening Friday night, Saturday morning. Look, okay? And then we have the world in the Six of Cups. So there may be some kind of reconciliation happening. I'm getting um, a renewal of replenishing. Oh, yeah, with reputation, that 10th house energy, I believe. Yeah, your second house and your 10th house energy between this Taurus and Capricorn, Venus, Trine, Jupiter. I had to get that out because you're realizing... 
there's a way out. You may see an opportunity. Uh, look, again, this is an opportunity period and there is a way out of this. And you're seeing this at this time. You're realizing the world is yours. It may be your birthday for a lot of my son in Aries. And you're just like, hold up. You know, reconciling with yourself, reconciling with those wounds, those childhood wounds. So let's go on to Taurus. And with my Taurus, this will be happening. Oh, and first you have Saturn and Aquarius happening in your 10th house, which is actually lovely. You know, you may feel some kind of restriction in work matters, especially because, um, you know, it is how you're seen. It's that midheaven and your career and your reputation but i'm getting there's going to be some innovation happening especially with aquarius aquarius is all about innovation and so this 10th house of capricorn energy after saturn's already spent a lot of time there is going to be really good for a lot of my Taurus. but let's see so this opportunity period is in y'all first house. Very exciting. And Ooh. Wow. And there you are, front and center. Front and center again. Well, this isn't front and center, but you know. Right off the bat, you got the Knight of Pentacles. You have the Emperor. And then you have the death card. Again, huge, huge transformation to how other people see you, how you come off, your reputation, the emperor. Um, definitely like a boss. You're definitely coming off like a boss. And with Uranus in your sign for a while, <laughs> you know, it's happened for, has it been about two years now? Y'all, time is flying. But Uranus transits usually last about seven years. And so... With this Emperor card, you're really being molded right now by not only just Capricorn energy and this Aquarius energy, which may cause some friction for you since it squares you, but this is here to remind you, um, threshold time is time. This is time. This is beautiful. And then I believe, yeah, and so that Jupiter energy, so Venus will be happening, Venus and Taurus um, the moon in Taurus, all this opportunity period will be happening in your first house. And then you'll have an opportunity again on Saturday and Sunday with this Venus trying Jupiter in this energy between your first and your ninth house, which is already ruled by Jupiter. So that's very exciting. Let's see. just saw the two of pentacles and i guess i just picked up the right away what is the overall message that you have for my taurus from march 26th to the 28th wow, multiple oh yep again the emperor card pops out twice y'all yes y'all it's time for you to make a decision about what you're going to give what what energy you're going to give to a situation, to people, what money. Um, I'm getting huge Aries energy, but this is the new moon in Aries that is influencing us to take action with the moon transiting in Taurus. So um, you may be sitting here very self-assured, not looking for an apology. People may be here wanting to offer you an apology. Don't know if it's genuine. We won't get into that. But yes, there's definitely a call to make a decision about some type of recipe reciprocity some type of exchange um i'm getting an exchange of power as well so that is yours taurus and gemini what messages do we have for gemini new moon and aries this opportunity period moon and taurus what messages do we have for gemini my sun moon arising Power couple I'm getting for a lot of you. 
Um, oh, fire. Let me show y'all. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. Dang. If I did an individual, <laughs> this would be the thumbnail. Okay. Wow. This is so, it could be. It definitely could be. Might as well because, yes, yeah, Gemini. Gemini. Oh, this is so exciting. So, this opportunity period is happening in your 12th house your your um, for many of you gemini rising have taurus as their 12th house and there's completion there's a wrap-up and this is like curtains close is what i'm getting with this fire energy um curtains close curtains open both uh who there's new scene a change of scenery um step onto the scene gemini yeah yeah, because, oh, because Venus is about to go into Gemini. Yeah, because, okay, so this is exciting. Right before, and so you're about to tap into, you're tapping into this Aries energy, about to tap into this Taurus opportunity period. And I'm getting that boxing energy. Yeah, fire energy. When I think of Taurus, I think of boxers. But I also think fire when I, you know, envision the energy around boxing. So I'm getting you're ready you're so ready you're so a lot of you are navigating between this energy of fire and earth you're putting your passions but you're using um you're being diligent you're being steady you're being practical and calculative and this period where venus trines jupiter jupiter happening within your eighth house so there could be some type of mystery to you is what i'm getting with this king uh, mystery you're keeping you may even be keeping a partnership to yourself a business partnership an entrepreneur um yeah it could be romantic or it could be all in one you know and there's a wrapping up there's a com completion there's um some of you could be making things official and then you're going to step into the scene right or you'll be being seen whether you step into the scene or not i'm getting you taking action you interacting is going to be um the reason i don't know what i'm just getting the reason and then venus will begin its transit in gemini as well and then of course the moon will be in gemini very soon very very interesting Ooh, yeah many of you are getting out of a bind at this time okay like you're and it's interesting how this was aries card to begin with so i'm getting that's the overall energy anyways because we're under their full moon so we need to be aware of what's going on with aries we need to go be aware of what it is they need to let go of and then i'm getting this virgo energy is here as well still reminding us what are you letting go what is going to help you build what is going to be secure so that is your reading gemini i feel like that was long but as clearly i have some hair that was beautiful y'all <laughs> let's see cancer So, Cancer, this opportunity period of the moon in Taurus will be happening in your 11th house. This new moon happening in your 10th house of your career, how other people see you, your reputation, and earned work. Are we telling a story today? Let's see. Oh, interesting. We will. So... Because this looks like this is something on its own. And it's interesting because if this is happening in your 10th house, then you have the 11th house of other people, you know, associations, groups, networking, and still keeping to yourself because that's what this hermit card is kind of funny because I'm getting that you're still tapping into that Virgo energy. There's a Aquarius energy around you, maybe um, some type of interference as well. There may have been a third party relationship um, within the workplace or just he say, she say and some regret, some disappointment, um, whether on your end or their end. But yeah, because there's an opportunity, though, with Venus trying Jupiter, this Jupiter 
Capricorn transit is happening in your seventh house. So there's an opportunity to mend some things, to go within, to heal, and to see, okay, what is it that I'm doing that's sabotaging um, I'm getting celebrations, relationships, or vice versa. Um, who do I need to let go of? What associations do I need to let go of? Because you are already the ambassadors for this Cancer North Node, Capricorn South Node energy. So you're already having to go on home to your soul, you know, go within and tap in and be the lead. And so as well as Aquarius. So that's where that Aquarius energy is coming from. And Saturn and Aquarius is not making any exceptions for any sign so let's see um oh i've got the other half so y'all gonna have good y'all some good messages oh yeah so there's um king of swords again aquarius six of swords moving forward so what are you going to get clear about what are you clear about so i'm getting um thoughts keep coming in your head to remind you and with this six of swords you're like okay boom i already know like whew. Some of y'all need to do affirmations, okay? Um, you need to stand up for yourself against your old self is what I'm getting for a lot of people. Um, defend your beliefs. Defend your peace going forward, your long-term peace. And boundaries, boundaries. So that is your reading, Cancer. So this is for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising. And this opportunity period... But the moon being in Taurus will be happening in your 10th house. And very exciting because when I was shuffling, the 10 of wands popped out. So you might already be very hard at work. This may be your tunnel vision. You may have some goals when it comes to um, the work that you put out to the public. And yeah, yeah, because you also have Jupiter in Capricorn in your sixth house. So this Venus Chiron and Jupiter is going to give you an opportunity to really move forward. Um, I'm getting climb the ladder. Something there's going to be this is this period is a catalyst for a long term goal of yours. And I would be very mindful at this time because this is a very, very good time for you to take action. So let's see, what messages do you have for my Leos and the new moon? Yeah, some of you are stagnant right now. Some of y'all are stagnant. Some of y'all are just um, drained. It's interesting to say the new moon is happening in your ninth house. You may just be wanting to study on your own. Um, you're not interested in other people's opinions how they go about doing certain things is what I'm getting within the workplace. Um, let's see. Or how you work, how you put your work, how you produce, because that's been very huge with the 12th house energy. Completion. Again, we have the eight of swords. So some of you are really in your head right now about this. And I want to pull a card for, from the right away because I want to clarify... I get different energies with different decks, and right now, I'm going to clarify this Eight of Swords. What messages do you have for my Leos? What do they need to see is what I'm getting. What do you need to see? Because you you don't need to see anything with this blindfold on, but you need to see something within to know Aquarius energy that these swords don't have nothing on how you can get on and get to moving. So, okay, and this this may have a lot to do with your one-on-one -on -one relationships within the workplace. I'm getting there could be some mix between business and personal or some entrepreneurship and too many, too many hands in the mix, too many opinions, too many. And there, now it's replaying at this time. This Virgo energy has it replaying for some of you because you have Saturn now transiting Aquarius in your seventh house of other people of contracts you may feel bound by contracts when it comes to work um let's see mm. some of you really feel like you cannot take action on your ideas and it's crazy because and I'm gonna take my time with y'all Leo and let y'all know <sighs> 
I feel you, okay? I feel you. And this is the energy around fearing success is what I'm getting. You fear, you know, you know how far you can go. You know you can do this. But there's some type of, there's some type of comfort in just, staying right now and then and then yeah that's why that four cups try to pop out and then you have the page of swords so somebody you may be a little tacky in their delivery and just be wondering when you're going to take action when you're going to do this or they're just constantly asking or you know demanding it's just their whatever communication and it may have you feel like you are walking on eggshells yeah you may feel like that let's see But you need to see that it's time. Shoot, if I was her, now I'm looking at the Page of Swords. <laughs> Page of Swords is like a little god or somebody, you know, they not all, it reminds me of a uh, donkey from Shrek. Yeah. And it's just like, it's going to keep it real. He might not be the most mature, but he going to keep it real and say, girl, if you don't pick up one of them swords, whether you got the blindfold on or not, and just get to swinging and you ain't going to knock them all down. And then you good. <laughs> you might hurt yourself a little bit, but that's what this Aries energy is here for. You know, if you feel like you may, uh burn yourself burn yourself a little bit um or just accidentally cut yourself or stub your toe around this time it's just also a reminder of relax chill be calculative and be aware page of swords be aware eight of swords yeah okay what is the overall message that you have for my leos for this new moon, this opportunity period for the next 48 hours. Wow. Justice. I'm getting, I'm getting another message here. If someone was so fixed because this is air energy too so it could be an aquarius but if someone is so fixed on making you feel like you're stuck um manipulating you gaslighting you justice is here same goes for i'm getting media because that's what you see what happened with this virgo full moon virgo full moon happened got everybody oh my god oh my god but some people are like, okay, yeah, we may be stuck, but we ain't blind. We're going to go ahead and take action, do what we got to do, even if it's at home. And Justice is here to say, in the next few weeks and the next few months, things are going to be coming balanced. They're going to be coming into balance. And they are going to become in balance for people who continue to stay like this. So that is your reading. <laughs> Let's see. Hi, Virgos. I'm just going to do another video. We're going to have a part two. <laughs> this is for my Virgo. Sun, moon, or rising. Especially the moon and rising signs. And this, what energy do we have for this new moon in Aries for my Virgo? The opportunity period for the moon and Taurus for my Virgos. And this opportunity period will be happening in your ninth house. Long distance travel, I'm getting learning, higher learning, knowledge, Sagittarius energy. So this new moon is happening in your eighth house. So some of you may have went MIA or just pulled back that hermit energy, high priestess energy to tap in to learn. Yeah, so eighth and ninth house energy of um, occult astrology, tarot. And now there is an opportunity to express this to someone I'm getting so there's I'm getting mystery now you're not saying anything there is a sense of mystery and it may not even be intentional look this came out in reverse <laughs> and I say it may not be intentional see um 
but you're already Virgo energy. So this just already has you pulling back solitude may already be staying at home like okay you know tap into learning new things that will teach you more about yourself and all the swords are dropped you're dropping all deceit you're dropping all um lower vibrational energy i'm getting that like i said i spoke with leo you know there's news outlets there's um all of this energy that we have to have discernment at this time and so you're filtering out what just doesn't serve your field your energy field your aura and yeah that makes a lot of sense so you're about to express fifth house energy um some of you may be um connecting or socializing with the leo at this time or stepping i'm getting performing recording that's really good time to tap into social media um podcasting creating some type of content is what i'm getting let's see what message do you have for my virgos Wow, that's very interesting how you had the seven of swords that wanted to pop out in reverse and then six of swords. So the seven of swords, when it comes out like that and it tells me it wants to pop out in reverse, it's already telling me it is six of swords energy without the six of swords being here. So it's like, okay, ready to move forward. And this, per I love it. I love it because this is very well a lot of you. And it could be whoever, too. And it's just like, they're not even going to try. They're not even going to try. And it's like, bet. Cool. Good to know. Because I just love my peace. <laughs> and that is so Virgo energy. My mother is a Virgo. So let's see. What is the overall message? What overall message do you have for my Virgo sun, moon, and rising for this new moon and Aries opportunity period? Wow. Time of contemplation, a time of reevaluation, a time of um, a new direction, a change in a direction. And with the Six of Swords already here, that definitely is a uh, clarification. And what's going on? Y'all Sixth House. Yes, y'all Sixth House that Saturn has just entered Aquarius. So, mm-hmm. This could be with work and you may not be saying anything to anybody about what you want to do because you may be learning and building on more than what you're learning institutionally is what I'm getting. And I love it. I'm all for it, y'all. All for it. As long as it serves the masses. Let's see. In a good way. Because, <laughs> you know, people like to get technical. What message do we have for my Libras? Mm, some of y'all are waiting. And in this time of waiting, you're looking at things from a new perspective. Because I just saw the hangman. Let's see. What message do you have for my Libras? And this new moon in Aries is happening in your seventh house, which is interesting. House of relationships and partnerships, contracts, business partnerships as well. So it's interesting because with this opportunity period, is in your eighth house of mutual resources, other people's resources, debt, taxes. Some of you may be getting your taxes back. I'm getting that unemployment insurance that is being thrown out there. Um, documentation. But many of you know that it's because of this fourth house energy that Jupiter is now in. And there's an opportunity to create some type of foundation, some type of stability. Mm -hmm. Wow. Much like... <laughs> The overall energy that's been happening with all of the signs and the most recent signs that I just did. And I believe it was Leo that, yeah, yeah, that needed some filtering out. But I love, y'all know I love, and it's just like happiness, boom, initiating it yourself. And you're this how this is like an epitome. This is what, that's why I love y'all, okay? So y'all probably like, yes, we love the tower too, boom. This is all we need at this 
time. Like, all I need is happiness. All I need is good vibes. All I need is peace. I'm going to express myself. You expressing yourself at this time may also be shaking some stuff up. It may have a lot of people by surprise. Um, people at home, it may be a shakeup in the home, a shakeup um, when it comes to happiness. Um, a baby is what I'm getting. There is huge energy around unexpected pregnancy and yeah so there could be some oh there okay there could also be an outside shake up some type of secrecy with the eighth house also of sexuality you know that pluto scorpio energy and there may have been some secret that's coming to light is a shake up it's definitely coming to light the sun comes out okay let's see what is the message about this opportunity? Because what is the opportunity in this mess for some of y'all? And you see how the cards came out again. Okay. I love it. The sun card comes out again. And I believe this, oh, I can't remember. I think it was Taurus. They had the emperor come out twice to clarify. So look, y'all. <laughs> The Page of Wands, the Sun, and the Ten of Wands. So, yes, there is child for many of you. And it could be you, could be somebody else. And it could be a shakeup that you're just, you were like, oh, my gosh. And But it brings peace. It brings happiness. And you know it's going to have a lot of hard work. But overall, the center and the main reminder is that this is a blessing is what I'm getting with the two sons here. And you may be having two sons. You may have two sons now that you know. Um, you may you maybe find out that you're having a son. This is exciting. Let me know how this resonates with you. You have the page of wands as well, too. So I'm getting Leo energy. You may be finding out that you're having a child um, July or August. So what is the overall message? <laughs> oh, this is long, y'all. Now I got to do a part two for it. The other signs. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. The judgment in the four pinnacles. Save your money if you're about to have a baby. <laughs> Or this is what you're planning as well, because the shakeup may have, have happened when you found out or when you just had a baby. And there's judgment here, but overall message is... Don't just give your money to anybody. Don't just spend it on anything is what I'm getting. Your time is, is a time to be practical when it comes to your eighth house, ninth house, and fourth house energy is what I'm getting. Also seventh house, especially your seventh house, okay? But it's interesting I said ninth house. So what house is that for y'all? Gemini, Capricorn, Scorpio, Pisces, Leo, Okay. Yeah, be mindful in your communication about your money. Don't be impulsive. Don't be showy because there can be a shakeup and now it could require more work. It could require um, a lot of replenishment is what I'm getting. So that is your reading and 